in case you're new here, I'm Vampire Preacher. We're going to be unboxing some uh, some action figures today, as we do every week. In fact, every Sunday at noon, Central Time, 1 p.m. Eastern Time. You, you knew about that, though, right? You knew about that, right? Right? Enough of that. So, <clears throat> today we've got one big unboxing to do, and then, if you guys are real good, two bonus unboxings. But, without me just going on and on about today, let's find out what we've got. After all, last week I showed off this box, so that you guys can see what we're working with here. It is this very plain, if my camera won't stop auto-focusing like crazy. This very, very plain brown box. All right. So what's in the box? What's in the box? What's in the box? What's in the fucking box? Oh, glad you guys asked. We'll get out our special opening tool. That's a knife. And we'll give it a quick little open here for you. Inside of our box is... Da -da 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 -da. That's right, we've got more X-Men. This, though, ladies and gentlemen, is not just any normal X-Men pack. This is the Amazon-exclusive Family Matters 3-pack. <sighs> I'm very happy that this came in. I'm also very happy that I got this on Cyber Monday, because on Cyber Monday, this normally $60 plus set was like 40 bucks. I'll take it. Between the price drop on this, the price drop on the Alpha Flight box set that you guys saw me unbox a couple weeks ago, uh, and the price drop on that from that same unboxing, the Captain America 2 pack, it means that this pack was technically free because the Alpha Flight box set went from being 110 bucks down to being 70 and the Captain America set was 5 bucks less than I even paid for it. Uh, so this was actually negative five dollars, so that's pretty cool. But enough of me talking, let's see what we've got here. So, in front of us, we've of course got the Family Matters box set. We've got Quicksilver, we've got a more comic accurate classic Magneto, and we've got a new updated Scarlet Witch. Uh, we also have extra head and some effect pieces in here. Uh, One's on Scarlet's one arm, the other one's up here. Two for Magneto, and two extra hands for Pietro. On the side, we've got comic versions of all three characters. It's the same on both sides. A bunch of comic panels of everybody doing their thing. Uh, from a bunch of iterations, the unusual one, and the one that I'm a little bit... Uh, Mmm, uncomfortable with here is this one, which if you guys don't know, this is, I believe this is from the Ultimate Storyline, uh, in which case not only were Pietro and Wanda brother and sister, they were also boyfriend and girlfriend. Yeah, there's a reason why I'm a little bit uncomfortable with that picture. Anyway, we also have our blurb here. About Magneto forming the Brotherhood of Evil Mutants. Hey, we can actually kind of read it. Thanks, camera, for not being a complete hunk of crap. For once. Well, let's take our opening tool once again. Pop the tape on the side of this bad boy. The word evil is not missing. It is not the Brotherhood of Evil Mutants. It's just the Brotherhood of Mutants. If you think you're evil, then that's just, like, your opinion, man. Yeah, well, you know, that's just, like, uh, your opinion, man. Not evil. They're just differently good. Yeah, we'll go with morally gray. After all, Magneto doesn't necessarily want genocide. He just wants to make sure that he's not part of a second genocide. 
He's seen it happen once before. And he doesn't want to see a repeat of history. So, before we get into our three figures here, for our background, it's just this really kind of cool explosion. I may or may not use this as the background of some upcoming pictures, because it's a cool explosion. Why would I not? Alright. Whew, a lot to unpack here. This is the first Quicksilver we've gotten since the Annihilus wave. That was literally the second wave of Marvel Legends that came back after Hasbro got them when Toy Biz lost the license. Uh, we haven't seen a Wanda figure, uh, non-MCU Wanda, non-MCU, a comic book Wanda figure since the All-Father wave. And before that, she only got one other figure in the Legendary Rider wave back in the uh, Toy Biz days. Just, I was going to say just like her brother, but he was actually technically a Hasbro figure. He was a Toy Biz figure that they just reused in the Hasbro line once they got the license. So, because we haven't gotten a figure of him in a while... And, uh, he always likes being first anyway. Being super duper fast and all that. Let's take a look at Pietro first. So, Pietro does come with two bonus hands. Uh, anyone who got the Speed Demon figure from... Oh, I don't even remember how long ago that was. Speed Demon Ultimate, uh, Beetle slash female beetle. Um, and you can still find them on your store shelves, but I'm cha. But that's mostly because they're both shelf warming and nobody wants either of those figures. Uh, but anyone that got that Speed Demon figure will recognize these hands. They're the exact same hands Speed Demon had. Uh, they're also the same hands that they gave to Namor for a set of flat out set of flat out hands but are they not fitting in okay Hasbro what are you doing here these pegs are clearly not the same size these aren't made to fit in these arms I was gonna put them in to show his cool running pose we're not doing that because these don't actually fit unless I do something to make them fit. And that kind of mod I'm not going to do here on stream with you guys. I try and do the easy ones so that you at home, yes, even you, can do the same kind of mods that I do to just customize your figures. Which reminds me, I had one I wanted to do today. 50-50, we might do that at the end, depending on how much time we've got. But, let's get into the articulation on this guy. Now, you can already tell because he's got the butterfly shoulders, I believe we're on the 2099 body. Because uh, that's a slim build body with the butterfly shoulders. So it should be the same kind of thing as we saw with North Star from Alpha Flight, or the same thing as Spider-Man 2099. For our neck articulation. Pietro can look down decently well. And he can look up fast enough to outrun a speeding bullet. Unlike the MCU version. <laughs> Too soon. Anyway, we've already explored our butterfly shoulders. For our other shoulder articulation. Trying to get a good grip since. Don't want that. Uh, those butterfly shoulders getting in the way here. Um, he can T pose. It's a decent enough T pose. It's nothing spectacular, but it's a T pose. Uh, we, of course, have the bicep swivels here. The double jointed elbows, which. Mm. I gotta tell you guys, he's close. 
but that's not that good flex. He's close to it, but that's not it. We want that good flex, and you gotta do better, Pietro. You gotta do just a little bit better than that. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. Yeah. We do, of course, have the standard wrist cut, just the standard in and out wrist articulation here. Uh, nothing new, nothing breaking the mold, nothing reinventing the wheel. Same thing goes on these hands, which I might cut down the ends of the post so that they can actually fit. We, of course, have an ab crunch on him. It can go a decent degree forward and pretty all right degree back uh, it's not again it's not doing anything to reinvent the wheel here but he's okay he of course also has the waist cut here uh some very odd paint underneath here we've got the hip joint switch it's okay he's not getting too much action out of it but we've we've got a little bit of we got a little bit of that hip action out of him uh, we've of course got the thigh cut the double jointed knees which can go pretty far back actually I'm really happy about this as a speedster as someone whose mutant power is just running really fast uh, proper leg articulation and the ability to just run at stupid speeds and get his feet at really weird angles through his knees that's paramount good job hasbro well done i did notice when trying to get him out of the box we do have boot cuts on him so cool there we also have the rocker ankles of course getting us a painful degree in and a decent degree out for his forward ankle movement and it's actually pretty nice and going back, he can go all the way back on point. I'll be honest with you guys. For a speedster, yeah, this is the exact kind of articulation I'm looking for. Um, I will admit I'm, I'm a little bit disappointed with the head sculpt only because it's more accurate to modern day Pietro. I kind of like the, the weird Wolverine hair out on him. It was a weird thing, but... This face is a little bit generic. It's not bad, and yeah, it is very accurate to the new way that they draw Pietro Maximoff. But it's... It's just a little generic from my taste. Moving on, since we did one of the twins, let's move on to the second one. So, the second twin in our Family Matters 3-pack is, of course... Wanda Maximoff. She looks like she's going to be a bit tricky to get out of the packaging. Mostly because of her cape. And the fact that her right hand goes into the packaging itself. Let's see if we can just get up here, kind of pop off. There we go. Pop off the head to make it a little bit easier to get the head and cape out. All of her body, plus the cape. We'll put both the effects on later. And pop the head right back on. Voila! We have our Wanda. Let's take a closer look at what we've got here. So. A thing of note when I was taking out the cape is I noticed it doesn't have the split all the way down to the bottom. Uh, it starts out as a split cape, and then it kind of becomes one piece. Uh, I know that Wanda has had different iterations of her cape, where it's been split down here at the bottom, where it's not been. I don't recall if the Allfather wave had the split or not. Honestly, that seemed like an easy part reuse of just reuse the same cape and give us a new head sculpt and possibly a new body sculpt. Uh, a whole new body sculpt would have been even better, but I'll take what I can get. Uh, the head sculpt, I will say, looks leagues better than even the previous one. 
Uh, if you guys can see, it looks actually really nice. Uh, the All-Father Wave 1 looked good, but it didn't look quite this good. This one, I'll admit, is a very nice head sculpt for Wanda Maximoff. However, we can already tell by this luscious mane of brunette hair that she's got here that her her neck articulation ain't gonna be it, Chief. That's as far down as she's looking, and that's as far up. She can pretty much look straight forward, and that's it. Uh, that's all the neck articulation you're getting. At least they did a really pretty sculpt with it, but yeah, no, with all this hair, she's not moving. <laughs> for our shoulder articulation. We're getting about a T-pose out of her. Uh, of course, we're going to need to turn that because for some reason or another, Hasbro doesn't like listening about the whole give our female figures double-jointed elbows for whatever crazy reason. It's not like people actually want to be able to pose their figures or anything. So for Wanda, with the single jointed elbows, yeah, it's pretty much exactly as it came out of the box. That's it. She's not even getting 90 degrees. Not only is this not that good flex, this is the most pitiful flex I've seen yet. This isn't even 90 degrees. Come on, guys. Come on, you can do better. She does have, of course, the standard in and out wrist articulation. Our standard wrist cuts, she's not going to get a sword cut because... She doesn't really need them. She's a sorceress. She's a reality warping mutant. Yeah, you're gonna pose her with her hands out like this. Especially with the effect pieces that they gave her. And if I'm gonna be honest, I'm gonna probably double these up on top of the effect pieces from the previous releases to make it really look like she's utilizing her powers. Because... Yeah, I'm not going to lie to you guys, just from looks alone, I really like this figure. She's probably going to be the one I'm going to display in my comic book setup for the Brotherhood of Mutants. For my Avengers display, of course, I've got the Civil War version of her. But for, for my Brotherhood, it's probably going to be this setup. I really, really like how this figure looks. It's a really nice update. For the... Ab swivel because again Hasbro doesn't care about getting gobs of money if they updated their female sculpt we're getting a slight bit of side to side articulation for our forward articulation uh -oh. that's it and that's not supposed to <laughs> all right hello <laughs> of all the things that have ever happened to me I've never had a figure just have their arm randomly pop out of its socket. At least one that's not a build-a-figure. Well, that's great. That's something I'll deal with after the stream, because that was odd. Uh, for her backward ab swivel articulation, that's it. So, that's all the forward. That's all the back. That's it. That's all you're getting out of her. Uh, no waist cuts for our thigh or for our hip articulation. All I'm gonna say is that her brother has better hip articulation than she does. <sighs> Yikes. She, of course, has the thigh cut, the double-jointed knees, which, even though she has less muscle mass than Pietro, her knees only go barely 90 degrees. That's barely, and I mean just barely enough to get you out of rehab after you've had a knee replacement surgery. Come on now. And they're both wobbly. <laughs> Good luck even getting her to stand. And, yeah, no. No uh, back peg, so I can't even use one of my stands to make her fly. I'll need to get a Tamashi to make her fly. 
She's, of course, got the rocker ankle, which can go a fairly decent degree in and out. Uh, forward, there's a little bit of movement there and back. She can at least go all the way on points. All in all, for Wanda, I like how they updated her look. I don't like how they did the figure. It's a very pretty looking figure. It looks nice. I like how it looks. I'm going to need to do something about that arm that just decided, you know what? I'm not going to be part of the figure anymore. My people need me. I have to go now. My planet needs me. Yeah, I'll need to do something or another about that. Later on, I'll probably need to boil it and pop it back in. If I'm going to display this one the way I want to. Uh, she's okay. She's alright. I'll be honest, though, I didn't really get the set for Wanda. She's a nice update. I more so got it for our other two. Speaking of, we've got our final one. We've already explored both of our twins. So, let's explore the reason for getting this pack. Now, I'll admit, Pietro was part of the reason. Because he really desperately needed an updated figure in my collection. I've got the previous one, and man... Whew, if you guys go on to the YouTube channel... You are looking at the YouTube channel, right? 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 If you guys go on to the YouTube channel and look at the Apocalypse Wave thumbnail... Uh, I did a Brotherhood of Evil Mutants setup there using the previous Scarlet Witch from the Allfather Wave and the previous Hasbro version of, a uh, well, Hasbro slash Toy Biz version of Quicksilver, and he sticks out like a sore thumb. He is rough. I'm not gonna lie to you guys. He, he is not a pretty fella. Uh, I will note Magneto also comes with two extra hands here in fists. I'm never going to put Eric Leshner as making a fist when I can have his hands out the way they are currently. Uh, I'm also going to pop off his head to make it a little bit easier to get him out of the case. There we are. That gets everybody off the plastic. Now, since we, uh, since we do have his head already off. This is the one that it comes with. Uh, so you guys can see the different heads. Uh, it's kind of a neutral expression. And we have our very angry, very snarling, powered up, can't even see his pupils. So we can see he's gritting his teeth. He looks mad. <laughs> welcome to die. A popular thing that I've seen done as of late is people taking this, boiling uh, some water, removing the helmet from one of the heads, making it so that he can hold one helmet while having on the unmasked head from the Apocalypse Wave. Uh, that might actually be on my docket of things to do to customize this figure to make the ultimate Eric Leshner. Let's get our cape back in, if it will go back in. Now, honestly, I, I wish they came out with this version first, but they knew what they were doing here. They knew for a fact that if they came out with this version, no one would want to want the... Uh, version they did in the Apocalypse Wave, the black and red version. This, this is the version everyone wants. This is that 90s X-Men theme. This is the iconic Magneto. You knew what you were doing, Hasbro. You knew. Let's get into the articulation on him. For our head, our neck articulation. He's looking down on those beneath him decently well, and 
Looking forward to a brighter future. That's how we're going to put it for him. <laughs> I believe the body style they're using here is the Bucky Cap. Uh, is it, it's nothing extraordinary for the body. It's just kind of there. But honestly, it really works in this situation. Uh, an updated mold for everything would be nice, Hasbro, but I'll, I'll forgive you on this one. It actually works here. Uh, for our shoulder articulation, he's getting a T-pose. Good enough. Uh, we do, of course, have our bicep swivels, our double-jointed elbows... Which, if we can get him to, is he going to? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Eric Leshner, Magneto, is giving us the closest thing I think we're going to get today to that good flex. I'll take it. We've, of course, got the in and out standard wrist cut on him. And no, I'm like I said before, I'm never gonna make him bogged up in a fist because that's just kind of odd when I can instead have him looking like he's trying to lift something with his I'll pop off a hand here, make it a little bit easier on ourselves. I'd much rather have him looking as though he's powered up, trying to lift up something. Like this, than have him balled up in a fist. It's just an odd decision to give Magneto of all people fists. He doesn't he doesn't really need him, let's be honest. He doesn't. He he needs the open claw hand. Four hour Waist articulate. Well, first things first. For our ab crunch, he can go forward actually further than Quicksilver, and he can go back a fair degree. It's not perfect, but it's all right. It's as good as Quicksilver back, but not far exceeding him going forward. We of course have the waist cut there for our hips better than Scarlet Witch I think he's about on par with Quicksilver maybe a little less but just a little if anything we've got of course the thigh cuts up here the double jointed knees which can go mmm Eric you're losing your touch man We've got a lot of extra molding here, if you can see. Uh, it looks like kind of wrinkles in the suit, which is a neat thing, but it also makes it so that our articulation's pretty limited there. Uh, we do not have set. We do! We do have separate boot cuts! Those are the best integrated boot cuts I've ever seen. I didn't even think we had them. We do indeed have separate boot cuts here for Magneto. We've got the rocker ankles, which can go a pretty painful degree in and an incredibly painful degree out. They can go forward a decent degree, and the key question is going back. Yep, he can go all the way on point. Because, let's be honest here, if you're going to be displaying Magneto, he's probably going to be in your display flying like this, hands out... Utilizing his powers, probably at the back of the display with a stand, making it so that he's flying above the rest of the Brotherhood. I mean, I know that's why I personally got him, because that's the exact thing I'm going to do. I'm going to have Magneto at the back of the Brotherhood, hands raised. Might even use the uh, angry face for that one. I'm not sure. 50-50. Or I might use the unmasked Eric Leshner face. Who knows? But, before we give it our final review, let's do one last thing. 
You all thought I was going to forget. You thought I'd forgotten about it, but no. No. We have back again our trusty T-Square. So that you all, and I can know just what size we're looking at here with our figures. For Eric, old Mags, we're looking at... In width, just because of the width of the cape, it's about five and a half... Actually, about five and three quarter inches wide. Uh, for his height, well, we're right at about that six and a half mark. For Scarlet Witch, we're looking at about four inches wide by mm, six and a quarter inches tall from the very tip top of her headpiece. And of course, for Pietro, he doesn't have any kind of cape, he just has his arms, which I'm sure I can even get to down further. Uh, we're looking at him being about about three inches wide and right at about right at about six inches tall on the nose. So, all in all, the Family Matters 3-pack Is it a good three pack? Yeah. For the price I paid for, I paid again. It was technically forty dollars, but I'd gotten forty-five dollars back from Amazon because of price matching, well, technically doing a return and a rebuy on Cyber Monday of the Alpha Flight box set and the Captain America the First Avenger box set. So technically this was negative five dollars for me. I'll take it. At 40 bucks, yeah, this is a really nice set. Um, I like the new Magneto. If you didn't get Magneto previously in the Apocalypse Wave, yeah, grab him. If you don't have the previous Pietro Maximov, as they've made no Quicksilver figures in... Jeez, it's been ages. Uh, it's been the better part of a decade. Actually, I don't think... No, it's been more than a decade. It's been more than a decade. In the 2010s, we've never seen any other Quicksilver figure besides this one. Um, and it's been quite some time since we've seen any comic book Scarlet Witch. If you don't have these figures, if you don't have a comic-accurate Magneto, if you don't have Wanda and Pietro, and you want a comic-accurate Brotherhood of Evil Mutants, or just Brotherhood of Mutants now, because they're not evil... They're not evil. They're just differently morally gray. Honestly, it's well worth your money. I'm going to give this pack... I'm going to give it a... Yeah, a seven. I was debating on a six. It's a seven. Um, the new stuff that they did with Eric is really great. Just getting an updated Quicksilver is a big relief. And, yeah, I really do like the new head sculpt that they did for Scarlet Witch. Hopefully yours doesn't have her arm pop out out of nowhere, because that was fun. Hopefully it's a little bit better for you guys. For me, it's a 7. I'll give it a solid 7. So. Technically, that was our only real unboxing of the day. Our only true unboxing was this one. So thank you all very much for joining me. I'm playing with it. You should know better. You guys, you guys know. You guys know. What time is it? It's bonus figure time. Especially since I got super lucky. I got stupid lucky this week. Two exclusive figures. One came in when I ordered it because this thing is... This thing is ridiculously hard to find. This thing is stupid hard to find. But I found it, and I'm happy. The other one, I wasn't even expecting to find, and I just came across it out of all places, Ross. 
Yeah, I know I'm surprised as you guys are. So, let's see what we've got. We'll lead up to the big, the big bad, our, our big figure that I really can't wait for. So, for right now, we will get into the formerly Walmart exclusive comic Black Panther Vibranium Suit. Now, this is the one that I said I found it, of all places, Ross. I know, I'm super surprised too. This figure was formerly a Walmart exclusive. You couldn't find it anywhere else, and you couldn't even find it there on the shelves. I never saw it in person until Ross yesterday. I'll take it. So, let's get into what we've got in front of us. We've, of course, got the window pane front where we can see all of our goodies inside. We've got our artistic rendering on the side, our picture of our figure on the back, uh, our little blurb here about T'Challa wearing his vibranium technology suit. On the inside, our background is this really deep purple panther symbol. Uh, it's the first time I've seen them use that. That's actually pretty cool looking. We also have two extra hands. So we've got both a set of claw hands and a set of fists. Appropriate for T'Challa to use. We have a normal head without the markings from the vibranium suit. We have these two purple flame effects. Uh, they're meant to be the vibranium energy, but you know as well as I do, these are just the same flame effects that we saw with the Human Torch figure, which I'm pretty positive are the same flame effects we saw in the Doctor Strange Wave Iron Fist release. And we have T'Challa with his uh, necklace here, which is actually a separate piece, not just molded on. So that's kind of nice. So before we start putting on our extra pieces, let's get into the articulation on this guy here. For our neck articulation. He can look down incredibly well. And he can actually look up really well. That's actually really impressive. I'm really happy about that. Uh, he can look almost straight up. I mean, that's really cool. That will make for some really fun posing with him. For our shoulder articulation. We're getting about a T-pose out of him. Not much more, but a T-pose will work. We've, of course, got the double joint or double jointed, the bicep swivel. Now on to the double jointed elbow instead of me jumping the gun. I'll admit when I'm wrong, we have, for the second time today, that good flex out of one of our characters. One of our figures gave us that good flex, and it's not just Magneto, it's T'Challa. For our wrist articulation, it's just the standard in and out wrist cuts. Uh, again, nothing breaking the mold here, nothing new and different. It's exactly what you'd expect. Uh, he's not going to need the sword cut for any reason, nor any other weird cuts like a ball joint or something. It's T'Challa. You're going to expect him to need to either A, get his hands down in a running pose or up in a scratching pose. So, yeah, you're getting exactly what you need from him. For our ab crunch, we are frozen. Oh, we are good and frozen. Huh. All right. Yeah, now, 
I'm not going to keep on trying to do that because I feel like he's going to snap. I really don't want to do that. <laughs> not today, thank you. We do have the waist cut. The hip articulation is alright. It's about standard. We've, of course, got the thigh cut here. The double-jointed knees, which, again, I'm not looking forward to because you can see a lot of the uh, bunching of the fabric there that they did. It's a neat look, but I can almost guarantee it's going to negatively affect... Oh, yeah. Oh. Oh. The chala. As I've said before, that's... That's going to need more rehab, buddy. That's not good. That's... That is not a good uh, double-jointed knee there. That's barely 90 degrees. We do have a boot cut on him. Odd, but I'll take it. For our rocker ankles, we can go a disturbing degree in, an incredibly painful degree out. We can go forward quite a way. That's, that's pretty... Pretty horrid looking there, if I'm being honest. And can go all the way on points. Okay. I'm not going to lie to you guys. It's a pretty cool comic figure of T'Challa in a vibranium suit. I think it's neat. <sighs> Granted. I might be a little bit biased because I got him for a really cheap price. Like, really cheap. Uh, people are selling this for a lot more online than you can find it for at Ross, I'll tell you that. Uh, here's what he looks like with the non-vibranium head. So that you guys can see exactly what he's working with there. Uh, without the yellow eyes, with his standard white eyes. Uh, without the vibranium markings there um if there were a way to change out the rest of the suit to make it non-vibranium i think i'd really use this head i know this is the head that came with the retro version that they did i think it's the same necklace as well that came with the retro version actually i'm pretty sure this is just the retro version with some purple lines on him plus these neat purple flame effects which can be used for him or for anyone else with purple energy or purple flames uh, which I may use for a bunch of different characters I do wish that they would have given him the butterfly shoulders uh, just because it would have made for a little bit better articulation on him but I'm going to be 100% honest with you guys I got him for like 12 bucks if that. I don't remember if he was 12... Uh, I got a couple of figures at Ross yesterday, because they were like 12 bucks at maximum. I think he was the most expensive one at 12. Some others were like 10 bucks. some others were like 6 That's... Compared to a... This uh, Family Matters box set is normally not 40 bucks. it's usually like 70 or 60 or 70 something like that. It's... it's not cheap. So, getting him for 12 bones, especially since this is a rare, hard-to-find exclusive, supposed to only be at Walmart, but it was at Ross for some reason. I'm not going to worry about it. I'm just going to take it. Before we give it the rating, eh, eh, you, you thought I forgot again. And I'll be honest, because I almost did. Gotcha, bitch! Let's get our trusty T-square. And let's measure up the King of Wakanda. We're, yeah, right at about three inches wide and about six and a half inches tall. All in all, if I had to give him a rating, he is fun and for the price he was great, but... He's probably still going to be a 6 for me. I'm not sure if I'm going to be displaying this figure of T'Challa. Uh, I might put him with a classic Avengers setup, but... 
that'd be it. Oh, and because I don't own the Retro Wave one, and now that I've got this one, I don't really need to own the Retro Wave one. Because it's the Retro Wave one with purple. Uh, actually, if I recall, the Retro Wave one even came with the exact same flame effects, but in white instead of purple. So, there you go. He's going to be a 6 for me. He's not a bad figure. Uh, again, head by your local Ross if you want to pick him up. If you didn't pick him up the first time, pick him up. He's discounted. Might as well. It's a fun enough figure. Again, toss him with your comic book Avengers, and he's well worth it. All right. Speaking of Walmart exclusives... You guys have no idea, no idea, no idea how ridiculously hard this figure was. Oh, um, actually, if you're watching me, you might know how ridiculously hard this figure is to find. Because, whew, the scalpers, the scalpers, they like this figure. Oh, they do. They do a lot. Our final unboxing of the day is a character that we've seen a whole bunch of times. One of my favorites. I might be wearing the shirt of him right now. It's Captain America. Not any Captain America, though. This is the Endgame Captain America. A very particular scene in Endgame. Ladies and gentlemen, we have the mighty, the worthy Captain America. I know what you're thinking. I've seen Endgame. What makes him worthy? This is just Captain America. You'll see in a minute. Now, once again, the only way to find this particular figure is through Walmart. Personally, I set up a now in stock alert for Walmart.com, had it alert me directly, and usually within 10 minutes they sell out completely. Uh, and the price goes from being 20 bucks back up to 60 bucks. So, I'd highly suggest going, setting up a now in stock alert if you want this figure once we're done with this review right here. Let's explore what we've got. Clearly, we've only got three things in here. A cap, an extra head, and the shield. Nothing else in here. Nothing here behind the shield. Nothing at all. We've, of course, got the art of Chris Evans as Captain America and different art on the back as of Chris Evans as Captain America. We've got our blurb up here about him getting all of the strength that he needs to, to channel into the final battle. We know what's in here. And they tried to be sneaky about it. For our backing, it's our standard lens flare with the Avengers A inside of it. As for what's in the box, well, there's nothing special. Just an unmasked Steve Rogers head. A fairly standard looking Captain America, no, nothing out of the ordinary. A kind of beaten up shield and oh what's that huh well now that's an odd thing to include why in the world would they have Molnir in with Captain America he says knowing that everyone by now knows about the end game secrets <laughs> That's right. That is what makes this character so hard to find. It is the fact that this particular Captain America is the endgame version that has Molnir. It is our worthy Cap. It is our endgame final scene. Big battle with Thanos. This. This extra piece and this different head sculpt are what make this figure so incredibly rare.
That's why people are charging $60 to get this figure in the secondary market. But, before we get into posing him with these and the uh, final pose we're going to do for the day, let's get into our articulation. For our head articulation, our helmeted cap can look down decently well and can look up all right. Not great, but all right. Uh, I do really like the head sculpt they did for Captain America here. Uh, I don't believe it's a reuse of the previous head sculpts. I think they did an actual new head sculpt for him. Along those lines, here's our new Chris Evans head on him. Uh, which can also look down decently well. And can look up with a fair degree of hope. I'm not going to lie to you guys. I really like the way this looks. Oh, I really like the way this looks. Uh, for our shoulder articulation, I can already tell you, he's got some shoulder pads up here that I can already see are going to be making it so you can't get all the way up. But let's see what we can do anyway. Are these shoulder pads soft? They are. Huh. All right. His shoulder pads are actually soft goods that are glued on by the bicep. So he can actually, if you manipulate it right, go up into a T-pose as seen over here. I can't get the glue to quite cooperate with me. The soft goods over here just aren't quite doing what I want them to do right now. Otherwise, I'd get him into a full T-pose for you. But he can actually T-pose. All right. We, of course, have the bicep cuts. For our double-jointed elbows. Ooh, Cap. Cap, I was really hoping you were going to give us that good flex. And the answer is no. That's, that's so bad it might as well be single-jointed. Ouch. Now, a thing of note is our uh, wrists are very, very different. For his left hand here, he does have the standard in and out wrist articulation. However, for his right hand, unsurprisingly, he has the sword swivel, the up and down articulation. Because they knew, making this figure, people are going to be having him wielding Molnir. Probably, if you're anything like me, pointing it outwards towards one of the many Thanos build to figures when uh, the Avengers decide to assemble at the end there. Ah, oh, that makes me happy. For our ab crunch, he can go forward a pretty great degree going back. All right, ladies, he is actually bending over backwards for you. Fair enough. Uh, we do, we do, we do have a waist cut. It's just frozen on me. It is, it is good and frozen. Yeah, that's not wanting, oh, there we go. It took a little bit of doing, but yep, there we are. We do have a waist cut on him for our hip articulation. The absolute best hip articulation we've seen today came out of Captain America. Truly, he is worthy. Uh, we, of course, have the thigh cuts here. The double-jointed knees. Which can go back a pretty great degree. The boot cuts, of course. The rocker ankles, which can go a pretty disturbing degree in. Uh, all right, pretty painful degree out. Decently far forward. And all the way on point back. 
Another thing of note, just so that you guys can see this a little bit more clearly, everything on him is sculpted. So the chainmail on his vest here, or chest piece, is sculpted along with the star, along with the stripes here. They're actually all sculpted, it's not just paint. Every little line you see along here is all sculpted in. Uh, the shoulder pads up here are sculpted pieces of, once again, soft goods plastic. Uh, his harness, sculpted. All the side pouches and detailing on the pants, all sculpted in. They actually did a really great job with this figure. Not gonna lie, I'm not gonna pay 60 bucks for him, but this is my figure of the day. And it might be because I've been looking forward to getting this figure for so long. It came out just after Endgame, and it wasn't part of a wave, it was just part of a retailer exclusive. The only way you could get it was, as I've already said, Walmart. And Walmart, Walmart's very prone to the scalpers coming to it and trying to just take up everything. And for the longest time with this, they did. Again, I ordered this and not even 10 minutes later it was sold out. Mostly because people want to charge $60, $70 for this figure. I'm not going to lie to you guys. It's a good figure. Is it $60 good? No. No, I can't really tell you any one Marvel Legend is worth $60. Bucks. But this is a fine figure. This is wonderful. I love everything they did with this Steve Rogers. This will probably be my official MCU Steve Rogers going forward. He... I'm not going to lie to you guys. I'm, I'm a little bit speechless. This is a really, genuinely good figure. If you can find it, and not for some ridiculous price. Not for something that someone's charging out the ass for. Because, no. Save your money. Don't feed the scalpers. Do like I did. Now in stock. Put an alert for Mighty... I think they have it as Mighty Captain America or Worthy Captain America. It's one or the other. It'll let you know straight to your email. So if you've got your email on your phone, like everyone does these days, it'll tell you like that. You can just order it. If you're like me, I just put it in my cart. When it was already sold out, I put it in my cart so that as soon as it came into stock, ordered. I didn't even need to think twice. This is fantastic. Plus, if you take this Walmart exclusive, only one place to get it figure and combine it with the figures that we saw last week for our Brothor wave. Specifically our Mark 85 Tony. And that, uh, that custom we were talking about. You guys remember the end of that video last week, where we made the custom of Thor by taking our Infinity War Thor popping off his head, giving him our Bro Thor's head. Manipulating his ab swivel to make it a little bit more popped out. And of course, as many lightning effects as we can. Plus, even uh, sometimes giving him the Molnir now from this new Captain America.
there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. With this figure, we now have our endgame big three. The Marvel MCU started off with this man right here and continued on with these two. And it ended off... The whole thing wrapped up like this. If you're trying to make an endgame display, this is what you want it to look like. I am in genuine awe of how much effort they put into this Captain America figure. They could have been lazy. They could have just done a remold of a previous cap. But they didn't. To my knowledge, this is a 100% different mold of Captain America. Uh, including the swivel hand that he's never had before. It's leaps and bounds different from the Brothor Wave Captain America that we got. Which is 100% different from this one here. Although part of me wants to slap this new head onto the old Captain America. So I can do that mirror mirror fight. The other part of me wants to just have this cap going up against that cap with just a different shield so it's not all dinged up. The final part of me wants to take and cut up this shield a little bit to make it that true endgame look where he had the broken shield. But I'm not going to lie. This figure does put a smile on my face. It... It wraps up our big three. It gives us a close continuity to the MCU and gives us the big three, the protogenders of the MCU, in their final forms. I know we're going to see Thor again in Love and Thunder. We're not seeing Cap again. We're not seeing Tony again. And this is how they all look together for the last time. I love this figure. Very quickly, before I forget, because I'm just going on and on and gushing about it. Let's give him one final measure. Steven Rogers. He's about the standard three inches. I'm not counting the shield here. And in heights, yeah, he's right under six and a half. Honestly, I almost want to give this figure a nine. There are a couple things that could have been done a little bit better with it. A more accurate broken shield, for one. But, honestly, that's really it. Um, I'm not sure if it really conveys on video. The Chris Evans face looks a decent ways like Chris Evans, but I don't feel like it's exactly on the money. That being said, for my display, oh yeah, it looks exactly like Chris. Evans, not Hemsworth. Although this looks like Hemsworth in the end, so... I've been talking too much about it. All in all, I am. I'm going to give the Captain America Walmart Edition Worthy Cap a 9 out of 10. It is a fantastic figure. I cannot stress this enough. If you can get it for a decent price, I do not want anyone out there that's watching me. I cannot stress this enough. Don't support the scalpers. Don't do it. Don't even bother. They're not worth it. Don't do it. I don't want any of my followers, any of my viewers, ever paying that much money. 60 bucks ain't worth it for this figure. For 20 bucks, worth every penny. This is a fantastic figure. Yeah, it's the Walmart edition. However, um, yeah, eBay is where most of the scalpers are for this. There are other places, of course, where you can find it. There's even private sellers on 
action figure forums that are selling it for the same price. And that's just... Just ridiculous. He is a fantastic figure. Don't go paying 60 bucks for him. Don't go paying 60 bucks for any Marvel Legend. But, again, if you can find these three... Technically... To get this set up here, you need to buy four figures. You need the Infinity War Thor... Plus the Iron Patriot from the Brothor wave for the extra head. Plus the Brothor wave, Iron Man, and of course the worthy Captain America from exclusively at Walmart to make it so that you've got the big three in their endgame form. Upcoming waves we've got, in case you guys don't know, in case you haven't been keeping up with the news, there's a Fantastic Four wave coming out in February. There's another Spider-Man wave coming out in February. And there's a Black Widow wave coming out in June for the Black Widow movie. Uh, they've got some awesome figures in them. So 2020 is going to be quite a year. We've already seen two other exclusive figures announced in the Stepford Cuckoos, which is going to be a Walgreens exclusive, and another Retro Storm, this time in the black outfit as opposed to the white outfit we got last time. There's a lot coming, and this is this is not even including our Strong Guy Wave, because we haven't been announced the other half of the Strong Guy Wave. We know it's Strong Guy, Warpath, and Sunspot. Don't know who else is in it. We've got the Age of Apocalypse Wave. We don't know who the build figure is yet. So if you're a collector like me, it's going to be a big year again. 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 Hopefully, we get a little bit of Mercy, but... I don't think Mercy's really on Hasbro's docket for this year. But I thank you guys so much for joining us here. It's been an awesome year. Thank you for all of your support. You've been awesome. Thank you guys so much. Don't forget, keep it nerdy.